Brits hurlers last Sunday gave a sharp reminder that you shouldn't believe everything that you read in the papers. The commentator at Casement Park, Belfast, this afternoon was Marty Morrissey. Kieran McKeever returns to the Derry defence after a three-month suspension, having been sent off in the league quarter-final against Donegal. He replaces Johnny McGurk at right corner back, while the attack also saw his change from the victory over down. Eamon Burns, introduced during that match, did well enough to keep Dermot McNichol off the first 15 for this semi-final. It's a strong, skillful Derry team, led quite capably by centre-half back Henry Downey. The Monaghan selectors obviously learned their lessons from the Cavan games and today have picked their players in their more natural positions. It means that Declan Loughman mans the centre-back position with Frank McAnini and David Byrne in midfield. Just one alteration to the attack. Michael Slowey gets the number 12 jersey ahead of Bernie Murray, which means that Gregory Flanagan gets the chance to make the left corner forward spot his own. In the early stages of the game, Derry took firm control of the proceedings. Scores from Cassidy, Gormley and Tohill, and this one from McGilligan brought them to a four-point lead midway through the first half. Here come Monaghan again now. This time it's Frank McAnini that's sending a ball up towards Jerry Moan. Gets there ahead of Denny Quinn, giving it across to McCarran. It was a bit, a bit of a hospital ball, but he managed to get it all. Great score by Ray McCarran. The captain shows that Monaghan are far from dead and gone. Three points between the sides. It was a terrible ball from Jerry Moan because McCarran had to go high. And despite Henry Downey's effort, McCarran took it on the run. Good score. This is Jerry Hoy. Allowing them all to go by. Jerry Moan. Back out, it comes to Stephen McGinnity, and that is unquestionably a foul. And Danny Quinn raises his hands to the gods and admits that on this occasion, he definitely brought down McGinnity. The elbow was a little bit high. So his third attempt at a free, 145 and one free, all gone wide. And on the third occasion, he puts it over the bar. And Monaghan keep in touch. Comes down towards Frank McAnini. That's a free. Ray McCarran wasn't expecting it that near. And Henry Downey was being fouled. Ray McCarran is giving out to Frank McAnini. With justification, I feel. Eamon Burns sneaking inside the Monaghan defence and they were a little bit asleep to say the least. He gets a 45. He was inside his marker but they recovered quickly. And Gene Sherry was the man who got a fist to it. It's bad marking though by Monaghan. And it took Gene Sherry to bravely go down on it and send it out for a 45. In fact, the referee has given a free out, obviously spotting for pushing by Eamon Burns, and it may work out quite well for Monaghan. Jerry Moan getting inside Danny Quinn, and Moan, big lad, going for a goal, and he takes his point. The first of this Ulster semi-final for the Clan Tippett bombshell Jerry Moan, and you get the sense that he's beginning to cause problems for Danny Quinn. He needed a little bit of support, but he took his point well from a difficult angle. Well blocked down, it comes to Cassidy. Trying to cut inside, fair shoulder, back outside to Toho. Well blocked down by Monaghan. Ray McCarran was the man who got his hands down to it. This is David King. Monaghan, under a lot of pressure. It's the siege of the Anderstown end of Belfast Casement Park. And it's Stephen McGinnity that comes away with it. Monaghan inspired by a superb defence. And this is Jared Hoy, the hairdresser from Dundalk, sending it in. And McCusker, unhappy under the high ball. Kieran McKeever comes back outside to Jerry Moan, bursting his way forward, giving it to Gregory Flanagan, looking for the shot, half locked down. It's still in, and McCusker leaves it out for a 45. Heart-stopping moments in Casement Park. But from the moment this game started, you felt there was a buzz around Belfast. 
and Jerry Moan is certainly causing a buzz around Danny Quinn's goal mouth. Gregory Flanagan, great defending by Derry, it must be said, and satisfied with a 45. Man that's going off is David King, and coming on from Monaghan is Declan Flanagan. Driving it in, and Jared Hoy puts it over the bar. He won an Ulster Championship in 88, he wants another one. He's leveled the match. The right half back, hit it firmly, and beautifully over the crossbar. Gene Sherry, and the movement from Gene Sherry from cornerback to fullback so far has worked absolutely brilliantly for Monaghan. And David Byrne, big guard of based in Donnybrook in Dublin, is willing to take on the might of Derry. On this occasion, he loses out to Carl Diamond. To Anthony Toho, sending it low. It's a poor ball. Turd McGurk is there for Monaghan. No messing around from Monaghan. Back up towards big Jerry Moan. Can't hold on to it the first time. Gets it down first, Gregory Flanagan. Turns on the left foot, hits it with the right, and puts it over the bar. Magic from Gregory Flanagan, making only his second appearance in the Monaghan jersey at championship level. Jerry Moan, who will be a match winner for Monaghan, as he gave it down to Craig Martin's Gregory Flanagan, and just put it up. This is enjoyable in Casement Park. Dermot Heaney being held back by Gene Sherry. Ender Gormley scored two points against Down. He scored one so far. He's now equal what he got against Down. His second point. The sides are level after 33 minutes of play in the first half. Oh, a lovely bend to it. Good score. Frank McAnini getting it down. Throws Eddie Murphy. Postgraduate student from University College Dublin. Takes on Henry Downey, the school teacher from Maharabat. Ray McCarran leading by example. Trying to get the cross in. Takes too many steps. It's another free for Derry. That time the referee was perfectly correct. But it's a poor ball as the elbow went flying. It comes back to Slowey, dropping it dangerously, and McCusker is under pressure, and McCusker does very well. Good goalkeeping. Down towards Brian McGilligan. Damian Barton stepping aside almost from Declan Lukeman. Back to big Brian McGilligan, putting the ball into space. Jerry McClory, Jerry McGurk is there. Coolness personified. Anybody free? No. Let's send it down to us, Jerry Moan. And he's got it once more. To Stephen McGinnity. He loves to run at the Derry defence. He's brought down once more. Another free for Monaghan. This player has that extra edge that's required for championship level. And McGinnity causing problems. Ray McCarran, as we are now into injury time, puts Monaghan one point in front, his second point of this Ulster semi-final. It was a very easy task. Over towards Damian Cassidy, gets inside his marker, brought down, that's a booking offence, unquestionably for Declan Lukeman, because there was no effort whatsoever to play the ball. Rugby challenge has to be booked. So the Monaghan number six booked by the referee. A chance to equalize after 37 minutes of play in the first half. End of Gormley sends it over. His third point of the semi-final and the sides level at seven points each. Ender has this lovely way of bending the ball straight over the bar. And after 37 and a half minutes of play in the first half, 
Derry and Monaghan go into the dressing room here in Casement Park, Belfast, level after a most entertaining first half. And the crowd in Casement Park standing to the feet and applauding the players, which is most unusual because they value good football in Ulster. Half time, Derry seven points, Monaghan seven. Two Monaghan players have it. One of them happens to be Brendan Murray. Well blocked down. It comes back, however, to Frank McAnini. Good ball up towards Jerry Moan. The tactic would be, and could be, to feed Moan as much as possible. He's fouled. The big lad from Clontibret. Kieran McKeever coming in with the challenge. An illegal one. Luton-born Ray McCarran. Sends it over the bar. Point number three for Ray McCarran. Point number eight for Monaghan. Henry Downey giving it back to Brian McCormick, who's come on for Richard Ferris at halftime. And to Gormley. Chips it beautifully over the bar. His fourth of the afternoon, and once more, the sides are level. This was a nice bit of skill as the ball came in from Brian McCormick. Gormley won the ball. He decided to chip it over Michael Thompson and over the bar. Giving it to Michael Snowy. Again, Moan is the target. The bomber may be in Killarney, but Moan is in Casement Park in Belfast. Derry, however, interrupt their play, getting it down to Brian McCormack, getting away from Jared Hoy, sending a ball into space, Gene Sherry and Brendan Murray nipping in, this is Dermot Heaney, he needs support, good play by Brendan Murray, Jared McGurk, Monaghan fighting for every single ball, as if their lives depended on it, Frank McAnini stepping aside, looking for somebody that will provide a bit of space, it's Moan again, who's contributed an awful lot, and now he's got the point. The Bob and Moan, they'll call him in Monaghan. They've got a new target man, and this guy knows what it's about. But Sean McCaig, I've no doubt they've told, he told him to find Jerry Moan. He finds them this time, in front of the post, and straight and through, over the bar. So Eamon Burns is going off. And coming in for Terry is Joe Brawley. The loose ball picked up by Brian McCormick. And he's played well since he was introduced at halftime. Over to another substitute, Joe Brawley. Going for the point. And it's gone over the bar. He's hurling in 25, 30 seconds, and he's put his side in front. Brawley has arrived in Belfast. Ryan McCormick, good intelligent ball into space. Brawley, one hop onto the left boot and bent beautifully over the bar. To Joe Brawley. And he's determined to get his place. Looking for support. Gary Coleman. Pushed surely by Terry Hoy. Oh, wonderful fielding. Anthony Toho. Sending it in low and Thompson is there. Over towards Michael Sloy. Carl Diamond gets a hand to it. Henry Downey. Giving it to Dermot Heaney. Back to Carl Diamond. Oh, yes! A lovely point by Carl Diamond. Son of Tony, who captained Terry in the 65 minor All-Ireland. The name continues in Derry. This is a score and a half. Carl Diamond, the right halfback, a difficult angle, but he floated it absolutely perfectly over the bar. At the other end, this big Jerry Moon trying to get inside to Stephen McGinnity. Can Monaghan respond now? McGinnity in front of the post, and McGinnity puts it over! From Holland, Stephen McGinnity 
shows that Monaghan are still alive. Well, they'll be talking about this match in Ulster for some time. Great play. McGinnity worked hard and took it well. To Dermot Heaney. Derry playing now with renewed confidence. Heaney sends it straight over the bar. Dermot Heaney's first point to this Ulster semi-final. The first time he was able to beat Gene Sherry. And Derry increasingly looked that little bit more confident as Heaney got ahead of Gene Sherry and despite being pushed to the left of the post swung it over Murphy oops, almost didn't quite make the target back to Eddie Murphy oh that's a good effort excellent play by Castle Blaney's Eddie Murphy Monaghan stay in touch three points the difference 22 minutes gone in the second half the quickly taken free didn't seem as if it was going to work out but there's good forward play Ray McCarran and your captain easily intercepted by Carl Diamond he sends it back up Gene Sherry coming to Joe Brawley Brawley has played well since he came on and sends that over the bar Joe Brawley's second point and certainly the barrister from Dungiven has added more edge to the Derry attack since he was introduced. The second occasion, he gets it onto the left foot and puts it over. Joe Brawley, putting across Gene Sherry, once again getting a boot to it. Out towards Dermot Heaney. Sending it across towards Enda Gormley. And they put the finishing touches. To a lovely point. Ender Gormley. Six points he scored out of that total of Derry's 17. And that's one of the best. Dermot Heaney giving the ball in towards Ender Gormley. And from a difficult angle, it looked impossible from there. Just glided it over the crossbar. Anthony Tohill. Good ball in towards Ender Gormley. Joe Brawley going for his third point. A lovely point by Joe Brawley. Three points for Joe Brawley. Does that guarantee him a place on the first 15 for the Ulster final? And Jerry's tally gets more impressive as the time goes by. Terrible defending, it must be said, but good accuracy by Joe Brawley. The referee blows the final whistle. Jerry are in the Ulster final for the second year in a row. The final score. Jerry, 19 points, Monaghan, 11. Well, we knew that Monaghan would come out and give it everything they had. And uh, you're not going to want to match in the first 20 minutes. It's like a fight. You're not going to want to fight in the first round. You have to work at it then. We worked at it, and every time one of them scored, we came back and scored. And at half time, we tried and sorted things out, and we got to them at the finish. In the end, the better team won, Marty. Uh, I congratulate Derry. They played exceptionally well in the last 20 minutes. Uh, we gave it our best shot for a long time. For 45 minutes, we were there, and uh, probably if we'd got a goal at that stage of the game, uh, it might have been a different result. But fair play to them. They showed what a great panel they have. Their substitutes were very strong. And in the end, I said the better team won. The better team won. Well, so then, Derry march on to the Ulster final on July the 18th, and it must be st said, still look a good bet there. Well, these are the statistics from today's match. A very small number of missed chances in the match. There were just 10 wides in all, and Monaghan certainly can't blame that aspect of their play for the defeat. They kicked only three wides. Well, again, in this match, there were a lot of stoppages, 52 in all, but fairly evenly divided, with Derry conceding just two more than Monaghan. Well, for our next action, we stay in the north. Armagh and Tyrone ended all square in their quarter-final meeting a week ago. So, today, it is off to Oma to try and resolve the issue. <laughs> 